This week for EM and 5, we're going to talk about feeding tube replacement. And these patients come into the ER a lot because they only have a couple of hours after a feeding tube is dislodged before that hole starts to close off and we have a much bigger problem. So the first thing to ask yourself is what type of tube was this? And if you're lucky, the patient has brought in in a little baggie a really gross old G-tube that you can look at to determine what type of tube it is. So that's actually the best way. And the reason that we need to know what kind of tube it is is because we need to know if we can replace this ourselves definitively as ER physicians. So this is an example of a G-tube, and we can replace this and send the patient home. This is what it looks like. It should have a balloon at the end that you blow up. There should be this movable bolster that you can snug the tube down into place. And then a couple of ports. One is for the balloon, and the others are for feeding and access. This type of tube goes through the abdominal wall and directly into the stomach through a scarred tract. And then we blow the balloon up within the stomach, and we're done. Make sure you try to replace it with the same size as the old tube if possible to prevent stretching of the tract or leaking from around the tube. Now what if they bring you this kind of tube? Is this just a really long G-tube? Well, the answer is no. This is actually a GJ tube. If you're lucky, it'll actually say it right on the port, but it might not. What should warn you is that you're going to have this really long tubing after the balloon. And you can see it starts off like a G-tube. It goes through the abdominal wall into the stomach. You're going to blow that balloon up. But then there's all this extra tubing, and it actually goes through the gastric outlet and into the jejunum. And you can see if you tried to replace that yourself, you just end up with all this tubing coiled in the stomach, and it wouldn't really be a definitive placement. So as ER physicians, we can put in a placeholder but we can't definitively replace this tube. We're going to have to call surgery or GI or IR, whoever put that tube in to begin with. Now what about this one? This is a J tube, so it's just jejunal, meaning it skips the stomach altogether. Again, we're warned by this tiny balloon, which is different, and this long tubing. This actually goes through the abdominal wall and directly into the small intestines. So just as a reminder, this shorter tube with the balloon at the end, that's going to be a J tube. If there's anything on the tube that looks like longer tubing or a smaller balloon or anything on the port says something about jejunal, it could either be a GJ or a J tube, and you can't replace that definitively by yourself in the ER. You're going to have to call somebody to help. So what if that is the case and you only have a couple hours till that hole closes up? Well, what we can do is put in a placeholder and the best thing to use is actually Foley. We have those in the ER. It's really easy. You're just going to put it through the tract, blow up the balloon, and we're done. And you've got bought yourself hours, maybe even a day or two before we can replace that definitively. The only caveat to this if it's a J tube. In this case, you can't blow up the balloon at the end. You can imagine if you blew that balloon up directly into the intestine that it could cause perforation or obstruction of the small intestine. So if that's the case, don't blow the balloon up, just tape it in place. And if you're not sure what kind of tube it is, just put in a Foley without the balloon, tape it in place, and you should be all set. Now let's talk about some complications of replacing it. This should be what the tube is supposed to look like when you replace a G-tube. Abdominal wall, stomach, balloon, inside the stomach. Now what can happen is that it can go intraperitoneally, meaning you're putting it through the tract, but it doesn't actually go into the stomach. And if you feed the patient through this, it could actually be lethal. The most dangerous time for this to happen is in a very new tube. It takes actually a couple weeks for the stomach to scar and adhere to the abdominal wall so that you have a secure tract. But to be honest, it can actually happen at any time. Just remember that it's much higher risk before that scarring has taken place. The other thing that can happen is you create a false tract where it's actually still in the abdominal wall. This can happen if the patient has a lot of subcutaneous tissue or fat, or if you've had to do a lot of manipulation trying to get that tube back in place. And here you can see an example where the tube and the balloon is actually in the subcutaneous tissue, and this is all air and tube feeds. So how are we going to verify that that tube is in the correct place? Well, one thing we can do is air insufflation and listen for borborygmi, but probably even better is to actually aspirate and see if you can get gastric contents back. Once you have gastric contents in your syringe, you can also double check by measuring the pH. If it's less than 5.5, you can be pretty certain that that's gastric contents. If it's greater than 5.5, you should consider doing additional imaging. So in order to do imaging to verify that you're in the right place, you're going to instill 20 to 30 milliliters of gastrographin or any other water-soluble contrast, and then you're going to wait two minutes and then do a supine abdominal x-ray. The best thing to do is actually probably just instill this while the patient's right on the table. You're going to look for things like a gastric outline, rugae, and maybe even small intestines to verify that this is in the right place. If it's in the wrong place, like sub-Q or intraperitoneal, you're going to see a lot of wispy, splotchy contrast. It's going to look very irregular. And in this one example, you can even see the outline of the liver, definitely not in the right place. 
So when should you image patients? Again, if that tract is immature less than one month, they're at much higher risk for an intraperitoneal placement. So you should definitely image all of those patients. Also, if the patient was having a lot of pain while you were replacing it or it was very difficult to replace, consider imaging those patients. Or if you're unable to aspirate gastric contents or that pH is greater than 5.5. In all of these situations, if the patient's unable to communicate with you, that should just be an extra warning factor that you really need to verify that it's in the right place. So let's review. This is a G-tube. You can replace that definitively in the ER as an ER physician and send the patient home. If you think it's a GJ or a J-tube, you can put in a placeholder, but you can't definitively replace it. You're going to have to call somebody else to help you do that. For a placeholder to keep that hole open, just put in a Foley. And if you're not sure what kind of tube it is, don't blow up the balloon. Just tape it in place instead. You can aspirate the tube for gastric contents to verify that it's in the correct place and consider measuring a pH and image the patient if there's any concern that it might be in the wrong place. In order to do that, you instill gastrographin, wait two minutes, and shoot up a supine abdominal x-ray. Here's the references, and thanks for joining us on EM in 5.